Yeah, I'm actually the baby out of ten. So a lot of the recipes and things that I do, uh, things that hit the table as a, as a kid growing up. Yeah, so feed all the hungry now, and you never whinge about the food. You just ate. Except for boiled pumpkin. I hate boiled pumpkin. Huh? What is it with that nut? Everyone seems to have an Arnie June or something that boils the guts out of pumpkin, isn't it? If you're going to do that to it, make soup. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm sitting at the dinner table, I hate boiled pumpkin. I've got a lot of bad memories about boiled pumpkin. So I'm sitting at the dinner table, on my own, everyone, all cleaning up, we've done, everyone had gone, and I'm sitting there over the dinner table. You have to do this. You're too well fed, girl. So I'm sitting there having to eat my dinner and I've got this big lump of now cold boiled pumpkin. So it's not getting any better, is it? Oh, out the window. Well, it wouldn't have been a minute and my old man's walked in and a big blob of boiled pumpkin fair on his balding head and he's wiped it off by that and pop on his plate, walked away again. So I still have these in my <laughs> So I hate boiled pumpkin, I don't like it at all. Alright, but we're not doing boiled pumpkin today, are we, Brianna? What are we doing today, Brianna? Shepherd's pie. And you can smell it, you've sat right in front of it there, haven't you? You're starting to drool. Okay. Now, as you can see here, I'm using these tiny little two coils. How are you going anyway, everyone? How are you going? Good, thanks. Good to hear. He said, it's good to be too, isn't it? Yeah. So two quart camp ovens. Look, I'm in so much interest in what I'm doing with these. I'm cooking things, uh, puddings, lasagnas, shepherd's pie, stew, you name it, in these little things. And these uh, tra people who are travelling, like couples travelling, that's enough food. So they think it's just the bee's knees. It's just great stuff. So that's what they're using. I'm actually using heat beads this morning. I'll use the fire for lunch. I've got a roast silver side and veggie sitting out there. You can see in the camp oven out there. Um, the heat beads also are becoming quite popular. I started using them about three years ago. The first show that I was asked to do here at the Toowoomba Spring Show was, um, I talked to Australian events about it and they, they asked me to come in and do it. And I said, yeah, right. I said, I'll get me wood. Where do I like the fire? Uh, no fire. I said, you're kidding me. They had bloody hell on the cook camp and no fire. So I started playing for heat bead. Now heat bead sponsor me and all. If you want to do this, I'll go for it later. But yeah, heat beads now sponsor me and uh, provide all the bead. Now, if you're unfamiliar with camp oven cooking, I would say that heat beads are a great place to start because they produce they produce a very consistent heat that's quite high to moderate for about two to two and a half hours. So it's a great way to learn how to control your heat. Or at least I'm finding that with it. It seems to be coming along quite well. Now, as a rule of thumb, the amount of beads that we use, I'm often asked, how many beads do I use? By rule of thumb, if you have a 12 inch camp oven, right, I say you do the take two, add two. So take two away from 12 and put 10 underneath, add two on to 12 and put 14 on top, and that's probably going to be pretty close heat for anything you want to cook. Okay? If you have something like pork and you want to blister the crackle, chuck an extra three on the lid. So what I'm saying there is, guys, when you're using the camp ovens, the majority of your heat should be on the lid. Yeah? So you cook from the heat, force the heat down. We're all doing that, are we? <coughs> no. Well, you will now. Alright, okay, so a lot of the, um, I like to use a lot of fresh produce guys, bring the baby out of the tin and all, that's how I've kept this girlish figure. Now you'll notice that I'm putting the produce straight into the, into the pot. The reason that I like to do that is so that I don't overfill the pot. I want about an inch between the top of the food and the top of the lid. If I don't put that there, of course things will rise and stick to the top of the tin cup. So when I go to pour it off, it won't look tricky. Okay, it'll still taste the same. Righto. See those, bring in you know what they are? Mushrooms, they're like meat. Fungi. Okay, 
little chop in it. I like to put them whole into the camp oven too with roasts and things. Whole mushrooms go really good. Okay. There's one. Alright, you ever been to Teppanyaki, guys? Who's been to Teppanyaki? Oh gosh, if you want to go out for a night out with your friends, it's such an entertaining night. They're sitting in front of a big hot plate. And me being a dumb country boy, I'm only just becoming exposed to all this stuff. So they put you in front of this big hot plate and um, feed your hot sake, which you actually sit on the barbecue plate, this little thing, and a tiny little cup. I don't know. No wonder they got slandy eyes. Oh, not these little cups again. But, but um... <laughs> I should. Oh! Righto. Then we're up to some beans. So yeah, anyway, I got up, I got up with the Kevin Yard. Great night out. Them guys are so talented. They were juggling their knives, throwing them up behind their back and catching them, landing stuff up in their hats. Incredible. Stack these eggs up, so they end up spraying it all over the place. I just thought this is gonna be a mess. And he's raked her all up and gone, open your mouth, man. Straight at you. It's like great night out. It's brilliant. This other thing they did with um, onions. They cut the onions so you had all the rings. But you stack one on top of the other and made a tower about this high. He's poured sesame oil in, some sort of plonk, lit her on fire. So it's shooting the flame up like this. And he's lit the whole place up. And I'm going, wow, this is great. When this went out, it started billowing smoke. And he's just got the knife going whack, 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 and scraped into the meal and served it to us. Great night out, guys. Check out Teppanyaki. Anyway, since I went there, I got this little bug, you see. So, is ready for this? What are you saying? I've still got all my fingers. There's a few bits missing off them, but I've got them. All right, ready? There, one carrot. Not that hard, though. So I'm getting better at it slowly. I bought a new knife, 500 bucks I paid for this knife, you beauty. This one's great, up and down the knuckles of it, and it just skips off your fingernails, see? Eh? The new one I bought, no, the chunk pieces of fingernails. <laughs> anyway, it's a good knife. I've just um, been using it at home also, because I'm out in public. But, um, I, I was doing a gig at uh, Pittsworth last year. Just after I got the new knife, and yeah, that's how I found out about fingernails going in chunks. So, and I actually happened to be doing this and cutting the onion, and dunk, and I went, oh, geez, I don't know where that bit of fingernail went. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if anyone gets a bit of fingernail, that's there to pick your teeth, okay? <laughs> you don't get away with this stuff in the kitchen at home, do you? Huh? Someone here yesterday, I said, geez, how do you come and wash his hand? I said, <laughs> Pardon me, <laughs> I do. Okay, old Tom I used to say, when you cook at home, you're in the kitchen on your own. You get up the paddock cooking and everyone seems to want to help you. Sound familiar? He was bloody right, wasn't he? And how are you guys going? You don't, oh God, what's wrong for you for today? <coughs> Is that the best you got? How are you going? Good. That's even sad, isn't it, really? That's the best you got, really. Young fella like you. Right. Beans in there. Half them on the floor, we're going well. Okay, a little bit of bacon, a bit of dead pig. I always like to put into things like stews and shepherd's pies. And shepherd's pie, guys, look, what a great way to get rid of some leftovers. A bit of leftover steak or something like that. Chop it up, chuck it in. Yeah? Great stuff, really good, <coughs> really, really good to uh, get rid of things, get rid of your leftovers, and taste good. And whatever veggies you put in, guys, the recipes I'm using here, the vegetables are very standard, yeah? very standard veggies. But if you like your squash, zucchini, anything, chuck it in there. Yeah? If you like the taste of it, you've got to eat it, put it in there. So you'll find a lot with my recipes is they're not stacked. I actually find it very difficult to write recipes because I'm used to going to a cupboard or a tucker box and going, man, what have I got? And then making something with it. So there's not really any... It's a bit hard. Although, I've just written a book. <laughs> I've 
recipe book, ironically enough. My cards. So um, there's a few yarns and that in it. It should be out before Christmas, guys, if you're interested at all in having a look at that. Rangernick.com.au, you'll find it on there. On about half a kilo of mix there. Okay. So that's going good. See, I'm not overfilling the pot. Alright, now when I go to mix it, I'm going to chuck it back in here just because it makes my life a little bit easier. Okay, would you like to help me with this, Brian? There's a hand wash Billy right there. I'm winding her up here, aren't I? Wash it yet, turn that one on, wash your hands, darling. Now, that's a bit of um, mushroom in butter sauce just for a gravy, guys. So, yep, I do like to keep a few tins of stuff in there too for when I do run out of this fresh produce. Yeah. A bit of that one, how'd you go? Pretty good, can you mix that in for me? Give it a good Yeah. I told you I'd line her up, mate. I've been doing it all weekend, it's good fun. Get your hands on, it's cool. And in, look at that, she's loving it. Have you done that before, Brianna? She's a bit of the mix mixerologist, are you? Great stuff. All right. Okay, I cut up a bit of sweet potato. I love my sweet potato. Now, traditionally, you would boil the potato, mash it all up, and put it on top of the shepherd's pie, yeah? Correct? Yeah. yeah. I'm a very busy man. I've got important things to do. So, I need to go there and fishing. I'm not mucking around with that. So, what I do is cut nice thin pieces. I'll throw some bits of it dry, but nice thin pieces like that, and I just layer them on top, and that saves me a little bit of time, and I can get and do those important things that I've actually gone out camping to do, all right? So I find a lot of people go out camping, spend all their time in the kitchen, and don't seem to enjoy themselves. Well, I think you should be able to just chuck it in and go and do what you actually went out there to do. Sounds like a much better option, doesn't it? There's plenty of chairs out of the sun, guys, come on in. How'd you go, Vienna? Wonderful, you'll do me out of the job. Now, if you like, you can wash yourself up again there. And here's some paper towels. Okay, not all that bad. One thing about kids, they come with a guarantee to wash clean. They are done. Have a wash there and put yourself out. Okay, so what a wonderful job she's done there, guys, eh? That's just going to get conked straight into the camp oven. You're right, Brianna, you got it sorted out? Yeah. Super dad's on it. <coughs> Isn't it amazing though, dad? Once I hit that 10, 13 years of age, you're no longer a super dad, you're just an idiot. Um, I've got three daughters, I've been a sole parent for 12 years. So they've all kind of flown the coop now. <coughs> Youngest one's at a private school in Toowoomba here. And the other two girls are off doing their thing. They're beautiful girls. One's modelling, one joins the circus, and the other one's studying hard at school. Okay, now something you may or may not have seen, take a bum nut now. So what I've done is just pressed all that into there, yeah? Take the bum nut, press it into the, and just make a little divot there, okay? And put about three into that. Excellent stuff. And then just crack her into the hole. Bang on. Who's seen that before? No one. Well, that's a little thing my mum used to do. Okay, and we'll see how you like it shortly. Alright, so in go the bung nuts. Oh, there's a bit of shell. We'll be able to call it Ranger Mix Crunchy Shepherd's Pie. There we go. Into there. Okay, then I'll just layer my potatoes. Onto there. Out of that. And my sweet potato as well. I like that sweet potato. It gives it a bit of colour too, guys. Lovely. Take the fungi. Cut him up into the right The tomato is actually good for this too, just so you've got a nice pretty pattern on the top there. Certainly not necessary. There's a couple of um, mushrooms cut up into that as well. Now, a bit of cheese on the top. I don't know about you guys, but I um, try not to make the mistake of putting too much cheese on the top. I find if you overdo the cheese, you get all that oil, it's not really, it doesn't sit well in my tongue. So don't overdo the cheese, guys, just enough to cover the top. I like to use mozzarella, of course. Okay, that's looking lovely. Right. And last of all, 
something again I'd like to mention to you is one of my favourite beans, guys, the old corny. Yeah? So I get about a handful of cornflakes, great on top of quiche, shepherd's pies, yeah? And if you run out of breadcrumbs and you happen to catch yourself a fish, punch it up like that and use them for breadcrumbs, yeah? And for that matter, if you're crumbing fish, grab the crunchy nut cornflakes. They go down a smash with them. Yeah, especially the freshwater fish. Morning, Ali. Morning, Nick. How you going, darling? I'm going well. Looking good, girl. Dinner was awesome, thanks. Enjoyed your dinner? Uh, Great stuff. Ali scored the um, demo of the Shepherd's Club. Uh, what was it? Corn, corn, corn silver side and vegetables yesterday. Not much like wasting food. I was going out for dinner, so I offered it to the staff. Good response. Thank you, Ellie, for giving me a little plug there. Ellie actually, Ellie actually used to be about 40 kilos until she met me. I wish. <laughs> okay, now onto the heat beads, guys. As you can see, I've made these up. You can buy a, a burner to light the beads. It's ironically enough called a heat bead burner. And you'll buy them from places like camping shops, Southern Metal Spinners, Oswit. Or Oswit here, Oswit aren't here this weekend, are they? No. Okay, so that's how we're going there now. Guys, when you are you familiar with the heat beads? Who's playing with them? Yeah, you're playing with them? Okay. So we've only got one couple here that's familiar with them. You'll find they produce two types. That's your regular bead. And these are an easy light bead. Now, they both do the same thing. They both take the same amount of time to light. Heat beads have asked me not to use these with camp ovens or small barbecues. Okay, they're not promoting that, use them. They take the same time to light. I like to use these. And the main reason uh, for that is, when I light them up, they throw a nice big flame. They have an accelerant in them. Yeah, so they chuck a flame out the top like that and everyone goes, what's this prawn doing? Go over and have a look. So it's just something that, for the show, yeah? So, yeah, stick with them. They're certainly cheaper and there's more in a bag, yeah? And they take the same amount of time to light. Now, light them with a fire lighter, put them on top of a gas element, or just wander out and shove it in the fire, that whole thing. You'll get the same results, but they will take half an hour to light. Now, fire lighters, don't know about you guys, but those white ones, the chemical ones, I dislike them. They make the throat sore, and I can't very well use them inside, they're a bit fumed. These ones, and they're dirty old black and gold ones, Sander make them as well, you can get them at Bunnings, okay? But they're a natural fibre, I think they're a coconut husk. Okay, and they look like that, very little fumes, guys, they're great to use, okay? No. <laughs> Yes, yes, I have seen them and you'll get them there. I've seen them at Narang. Go camping in Narang, I've seen them. And I got, no, no, well, I got them and tried, I didn't like them. No, I didn't. But they worked fine. Well, I found they wouldn't keep burning. You sort of had to pull the lighter out to light them anyway. But yeah, they looked like, much like a match, didn't they? Yeah. And yeah, they did work well. They were fine to do all that. They did the trick. But, yeah. And they're a match with the fire too. Yeah. Okay, so that's the beads guys, it's up on them. Beads are great, you've got that two to two and a half hours of consistent heat. Yeah, so it's a great place to start when you're doing all the things. Right up. Now, I mentioned to you about the rule of thumb. Take two, add two. Didn't I mention that? Yes, I did, thank you. So who missed it then? So take two, add two. A lot of people ask me, how many beads do I use? Take two, add two. If you've got a 14-inch camp oven, and you measure camp ovens straight across the width, yeah? So from there to there, straight across the diameter, that one there's a 14-inch oven. So to use a 14-inch oven, I would take two add two. Put 12 underneath, 16 on top, yeah? Generally, that'll give you the right heat to cook anything you want. And you've got two to two and a half hours. So in fact, if you're cooking a two kilo roast meat, it's a perfect time to have it in there. So you can put it on and then go fishing. You can walk away from it. Right on. Now, the take two add two theory with these smaller pots, chuck it out the window. <laughs> okay. 
There is actually, and if you contact me on my website, I can give you the information. There is a chart there that will show you this amount of beads will produce this amount of heat. Okay? Now, all I need to do, and these aren't necessary guys, these are just for me. All you need is something so that the air can get around the beads. So, um, the barber, I've seen, I've seen people use uh, old electric stoves, gas cylinders cut in half, all types of things, but just something to contain a little bit. Okay, so we're going to put... We're going to put one, two, three, four on the bottom. Okay, I'm just putting them around the edge here evenly. And all I need to do is that there like that. Sit my camp oven over the top of them. Here's my back, right out. And I'm going to put six on the lid. In one to one and a half hours, I'll be eating shepherd's pie. What do you reckon of that? Not too hard, eh? Doesn't take a lot of time or a lot of fuss. I'm the laziest bugger you'll ever meet. There's an easy way to do something, I'll find out what it is. Yeah? Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, there we go. Nine. That easy, guys. So that's now done. I can go fishing for an hour and a half. Like that? You like to taste some of it? You would? Well, before you do that, I've got a magic trick for you. Do you like magic tricks? No. <laughs> you like magic tricks. Watch closely because I don't give any secrets away. You ready? Two fingers. Nice tight hand. Tap, tap. Fingers gone. Not bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Rina, that's it. They got me worked out, haven't they? How about this one? You, you were hungry. You should have come over here before you started eating your hat, darling. Huh? Watch this one. Abra? Cadabra. Ha! Huh? Alakazam! Not bad, not bad. Alright, who's up for a taste of pie? Excellent stuff. Right, oh guys, I'll get myself organised. I'll start dishing up. And this little packet here, I've got a serving spoon. <laughs> Nearly there. You ready for a look, Vienna? You've been keen, haven't you, darling? How's that look? That old, that old, that old, that old. Hopefully it tastes as great as it looks. How's that look, guys? Beautiful, eh? Good enough to eat, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that was a bit in there for an hour. Hour, what time is it now? I put that on at nine o'clock. Okay? So that was about an hour and a half, was it? Well, it's not actually like it's beautiful. Tell your mum. Lovely, tell your mum. Okay. So hold this shit up. And I'll try and get it to the everybody, okay?